worship for Sunday, April the 4th, 2021, the day of resurrection. Christ is risen, Jesus is alive, and God has swallowed up death forever. With Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, we may feel astonished and confused, unsure of what to make of the empty tomb. But this is why we gather, to proclaim, witness, praise, and affirm the liberating reality of Christ's death and resurrection. In word and feast, we celebrate God's unending love and depart to share this good news with all the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. We acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we are on the traditional land of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples who cared for it for thousands of years. More recently, the Haldeman Proclamation of 1784 granted a tract six miles on either side of the Grand River from its source to Lake Erie to the Six Nations Haudenosaunee of the Grand River. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber and I come from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario. I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for her music. And thank you to her mother, Karen Peters, for recording it. Video recording of worship has been done by the team of Kurt Horup and Tim Weber. Karen Azeroth is our soloist today. We thank them all. Thank you also to our reader for today, Josh Hyde. If you haven't yet prepared the elements for Holy Communion, such as bread and wine, you may wish to pause this video and make them ready now. In these challenging and unforeseeable times, if you find that you need someone to talk to or if you need any assistance, email me or phone me at the church office and I will help. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, it is thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with a greeting from our Eastern Synod Bishop, Michael Price. friends in Christ, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to offer an Easter greeting to you, and I do so with a heart that is bursting with gratitude. I'm so very thankful for our rostered ministers, musicians, and videographers for all that they have done to proclaim God's word and strengthen the bonds that unite us over these long months of isolation. I'm so thankful for the congregational leaders who have faced the challenges of this pandemic with great courage, creativity, and generosity. And I am so grateful to you, dear disciples, for your faithfulness in ensuring that the vital work of Christ's church has continued and in many ways grown over the course of what's felt like a year long season of Lent. Dear church, God has blessed and equipped us to be God's faithful people in ways that none of us would have thought imaginable. 
and I have never been prouder to be counted among your number. May God grant you and those dear to you a full and rich experience of the story of Easter. Not a story that we Christians explain so much as it is a story that explains we Christians. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Feast of Victory More than 700 years before Christ, the prophet Isaiah proclaims the good news of God's salvation and calls all people to rejoice. God will make a rich feast for all people. God will wipe the tears from their eyes. And most importantly, God will destroy death itself. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Seeing the risen Christ, the resurrection of Jesus is announced, and the response is one of terror and amazement. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. I like a happy ending. It's always good to be told that things will work out, especially when it seems that they will not. That's the reason that I watch W Network movies. I know they will end happily. The plot's always the same. The most unlikely people finally fall in love. There's always a kiss in the last five minutes to warn you that the movie's coming to an end and all the seeming problems are resolved. I like a happy ending when things work out well. 
But the Gospel of Mark doesn't have a happy ending. In fact, it's not really an ending at all. Imagine the women if they had been interviewed on the way to the tomb that morning. They might have reported something like this, as imagined by Professor Joy J. Moore of Sermon Brainwave. She says, this is the women being interviewed. For three years, our hope had been in this teacher, in promises that we thought were coming to reality. We've watched all that Jesus has done. And the closure is, okay, we're going to the tomb now that the Sabbath is over. They didn't go in the expectation of finding an empty tomb. They didn't go in expectation of the resurrection. They went because they had just had a long day living in the reality that Jesus was gone. What do you do when somebody dies? There's stuff you just got to take care of. They go in that mode and they find an empty tomb. And Mark says, So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Here we have Mark's ending. The only resurrection account with no Jesus, no joyful proclamation, no changed lives, no kindled belief, only fear, flight, and silence. I like a happy ending. And it appears that many in the early church community had that same preference, that same hope. For various writers composed two separate and different endings for Mark's gospel. The so-called shorter ending and the so-called longer ending. Both have the women sharing the good news as they have been directed so that the world was changed. Now, those are the kinds of endings that I prefer, but they're almost certainly not a part of Mark's original gospel. Mark's gospel is problematic for those of us hoping for a more complete story of resurrection as recounted by the other gospels. For some circumstances, however, Mark's ending hits just the right note, especially for those of us who aren't too sure about the resurrection or whose own lives are in an awkward unresolved limbo. As the Reverend Dr. David Loos wrote, we're often tempted to fix bad endings. That's understandable, even reasonable, but it's not always our call. The crucifixion and resurrection tell us that we worship a God who meets us precisely at that point when things seem to be at their very worst, not merely to fix things, but to redeem them and us turning what looks like an ending into a new beginning and taking what looks like a failure and offering it back to us as an opportunity. God will meet us at the point of brokenness and not just to be with us, but to do something amazing. We may not always see it. We may not always understand it. But God will be there at our point of deepest need and pain. God will meet us at our point of brokenness and God will do something amazing. And we all know about brokenness. Remember this time last year when we thought that this would be a short pandemic? Yet a year later, we're still in the various stages of lockdown. We've now surpassed an intense year of battling the invisible enemy, COVID-19. Some of us have literally lost to death people that we love. And all of us have endured figurative deaths and losses. Dreams of how life was supposed to unfold. Children, grandparents, or parents that we can't hug. Trips delayed or canceled. Working lives put on hold. Studying online. More than enough time spent at home. And many are dealing with deep loneliness. This past year, death, both literal and figurative. Death has been our focus. We do so need to be reminded that we worship a God of resurrection, a God who meets us in our fear, in our doubts, in our hesitancy to witness. And this aspect of God can be seen whenever the little word but appears. The women are frightened, but the angelic messenger calms their fears. 
They have come to find the body of Jesus, but they hear instead the incredible news that he has risen. They are awestruck, filled with terror and amazement, yet they are told, but go, tell. The last word spoken is not death, but life. Not sorrow, but joy. Not guilt, but forgiveness. In the New Testament, we come to meet a God who pitches his tent in the midst of us, to paraphrase the first chapter of John's Gospel. A God coming to the place where the world is in pain, where the personal and political and societal and particularly medical tensions have just reached the screaming point. And then this God takes the pain of the world into himself to be with us in the midst of it all, to reveal the glory of his self-giving love. So this unhappy non-ending of Mark invites us to stand where those first trembling witnesses stood. Those three women didn't see Jesus. Neither do we. They didn't hear Jesus call their names. Neither do we. They weren't entited, invited to touch his wounded hands. We haven't touched Jesus' hands either. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome are our silent sisters. The narrative is left for us, the readers, to complete. As the young man at the empty tomb proclaimed, Jesus has left the tomb and gone into the world. God has indeed gone ahead of us into Galilee, and we continue to be met by God wherever our Galilee is. Loneliness, grief, fear of failure, an unfulfilling life, unbelief, you name it. God will meet you there in the midst of your pain and need. Maybe Mark wanted us to write our own ending, confident that because the tomb is empty, all of our endings are also new beginnings. Alleluia. Christ is risen. And the people said, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made and help us to mitigate the damage caused by global climate change, especially among the poor. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Be with all those involved in the murder trial of George Floyd, that justice be done. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, those who grieve, and those whom we name before you. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Praise to you for the love you show to all in the resurrection. As our municipal government considers the location of a new consumption and treatment site for Cambridge, create caring decisions that foster the common good, save lives, and recognize your love for each and every one of us. Bless the work of all who are helping in providing vaccines. Hear us, O oh God, your love is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your love endures forever. Hear us, O God, your love is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness, love, and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. This is our second Easter in the midst of the pandemic. In many ways, it feels like we have been stuck in a very long Lent. We have been through lockdowns and restrictions. We have been isolated from our faith and personal families. We have worn masks, avoided contacts, washed our hands and worked and schooled from home. We have lost loved ones to COVID, unable to be with them and unable to mourn with family and friends. We have been afraid. When Jesus rose from the dead, the disciples could not quite believe it. They locked themselves into rooms. They isolated themselves from others. They were afraid. But Jesus kept showing up in their midst, in the midst of where they were, proclaiming a word of peace and sharing the good news of the resurrection in both words and deeds. This Easter, there are signs of hope and resurrection around us. Jesus is still showing up in our midst. In some places, restrictions are easing up. 
In some places, group sizes have increased. Vaccinations are being delivered to health care workers, the elderly, and to indigenous communities. Health care workers continue to work selflessly. We met Jesus among us as we worshiped online, but now some churches are opening up with reduced capacity. Through this long Lent, and now in this joyous time of Easter, Jesus has been walking with us and has been in our midst, whether we have been isolated or gathered. This pandemic is not yet over, but it looks like the end is in sight. Jesus will see us safely through. For, For this, this Easter, Easter good, good news, news of hope, hope and, new and new life, we say, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Right to give you thanks and praise, O God, for you have raised Jesus from the dead and swallowed up death forever. You made the world and all that is in it. You made this day, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. For this is the day your prophets testified about when you destroy the shroud of death and open the gates of salvation. You sent your Son, Jesus, among us, anointed with your Holy Spirit and power to preach peace and heal all who were oppressed. When he was put to death and buried, you opened the tomb and raised him on this day. Now we need never again search for him in the places of buried dreams, for he is alive and reaches out to us, walking with us and going ahead of us. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this, the end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Christ invites us to his table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness into our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. May the promise of the empty tomb, the joy of Mary in the garden, the renewed belief of Thomas, the eagerness of the disciples returning from Emmaus, the love of Peter told three times, and the peace of the risen Christ be with you this Easter, and the blessing of God be with you and all those you love this day and every day. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.